mentioned, we are uh, looking at this fourth chapter, and I want to focus my attention beginning at verse number seven. Uh -huh. Ephesians 4, beginning at verse number seven. The Bible reads, but to each one of us, grace was given uh -huh. according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive uh -huh. and gave gifts to men. Now this. He ascended. What does it mean? But that he also first descended yes. into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens uh -huh. that he might fill all things. Yes. It's the text I want to work with for the next few minutes. The church created in the mind of God before the world began. The church, God's saving place. The church, heaven's haven for weary souls. The church owned and kept by Jesus. The church sometimes discouraged, but never defeated. The church often misunderstood and foolishly dismissed. Mm -hmm. If there's any subject matter that we need clarity on today, it is the matter of the church. Yeah. Yeah. This text of scripture that we're examining today, it talks about the church in a very unique way. What the Apostle Paul does is he gives us a macro vision of the church. He gives us a comprehensive description of what the church is and what the church is about. Yes. We might even say that what Paul does is he presents a cosmic view of the church uh -huh. and he tries to help us know that this is not a view we can afford to miss that's right now when we think about this you and i should know that the church is not a mere collection of people that's right who do church mm. we focus a lot on doing church All right but the church is more than that yes that's right you and i must understand that the church is not about committees. Mm. It's not about conferences. Uh -huh. It's not about concerts. Yes, right. It's not even about gospel meetings and lectureships. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. These things have their place, but that is not in capsule what the church really is. Right. I hope that you leave today understanding that the church is really a changed body of people uh -huh. who are given a world-changing responsibility. Mm -hmm. right. And all of that under the direction of Jesus Christ. Yes. Right. All right. So for the next few minutes, as we look at these verses together, I'm going to present a teaching message. I'm going to focus on the subject matter, the church you never knew. The church right. you never knew. Okay. Well, what do I mean by you? I mean, a lot of folk in the church don't know what the church is. That's right. They've never known what it was. Never known what it is. That's right. And there are those in our world who, who've never known what it is. So the church you never knew. Let me uh, uh, put on uh, my teaching jacket today. All right. And delve into just a portion of this text. As I was preparing this message, I told myself, you're not going to finish in one sermon. Right. I said, all right, we just have to live with that and we break it up. Yes, 
Yes, sir. But look at these words, words of the apostle Paul. Uh -huh. He gives us some powerful words. Look at verse number eight. Paul says, therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and gave gifts to men. Uh -huh. That's verse 8 from the English Standard Version. All right. Paul, what are you getting at? Why would you bring that in? You started by talking about how we've got to behave among ourselves. You started by talking about walking worthy and, and having forbearance and love and lowliness. You talked about all that, Paul, and then you started talking about gifts of the Spirit. But you know, Paul, you said something in the middle of that that I didn't quite get. Okay. What do you say, Paul? I said, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and gave gifts unto men. Some of your translations might read, he, he took captivity captive. Uh-huh. What is this talking about? I want you to let you know that verses 7 uh, on through verse number 11 really explain what the church is. What Paul is getting at, he's quoting an Old Testament psalm. Uh -huh. He's quoting from Psalm uh, uh, 68. And in Psalm 68, uh, it's a song celebrating God's victory over his enemies. Now, God has always shown himself to be victorious over his enemies. Yeah. No greater way to see that than in the Old Testament. Right. God's people continually encounter problems. One of the problems they encountered, they found themselves slaves in Egypt. Amen. They were in Egypt for 400 years under slavery. And they cried over and over again to be free. Right. They cried and they looked for a deliverer, but it seemed that God had forgotten all about them. He hadn't spoken like he spoke to Abraham in a long time. Yes. Nothing had happened for God's people that was good for a long time. Well. But then God rose up Moses. Mm. Then God delivered Israel yeah. and brought them to the foot of Mount Sinai. All right. And Moses climbed the mountain yes, to get the message of God. Yeah. That's part of the picture of Psalm 68. Where instead of just talking about the human Moses, that psalm is celebrating the God of heaven who leaves, if you will, the throne of heaven, comes down the earth and delivers his people and then takes him back up to the mountain. Yeah. That's what that psalm is talking about. So Paul quotes from that psalm and he talks about how God led a victory procession putting his enemies and making them march in front of him as he marched behind them to say, I did defeat them and everybody ought to recognize it. Yes. And so if you can picture that, you can understand what Paul is doing, quoting this text when he starts talking about Jesus. What Paul does is he explains that Jesus actually took captivity and he made them captive. And he led a procession to show everyone that Jesus is in total control. Amen. So when you read these verses, know what this is talking about. When he ascended on high, says the apostle Paul, he led captivity captive. Who's captivity? Well, I'll get to that in a little while. Right. But this is what Paul is teaching. He is talking about the victorious work of Jesus. Uh -huh. Listen to the verses again. In saying he ascended, that's talking about Jesus. What does it mean but that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth? Uh -huh. He who ascended is the one who also ascended. or He, he who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might feel all things. Amen. Paul was speaking of Jesus' victory over Satan and his kingdom, yes. triumphantly showing that this enemy of Jesus had been defeated. All right. How many of you know that the devil's been whipped? Yes. Come on now. Yeah. Some of us, I don't think we know that the devil has been whipped. Yes. Right. Yeah. Because we celebrate and we give glory to our defeats. 
rather than giving glory to the one who defeated the one we say always beats us. Flip Wilson still got us. We still roll around talking about, well, I didn't mean this. The devil made me do this. Can I tell you, the devil can't make you do anything? Can I remind you that the devil can never make you do anything? Somewhere I read, greater is he that is in us. Yes, sir. Then he that is in the world. Amen. Jesus has defeated the devil. That's what that verse is talking about. All right. Well, now, let's open it up a little bit more. You see, you and I need to understand how Jesus defeated Satan. Satan got a hold of this world. Uh-huh. I want you to think with me. This is a teaching sermon. God made the world. Yes. In the beginning, God made the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God made light out of nothing. In the beginning, God made plants grow out of nothing. In the beginning, God separated the waters from above from the waters on the... uh, God did all that. God made man. Mm -hmm. And God said, after he finished all his work, it's very good. But somehow or another, the devil got involved. You say, how did the devil get involved? That's a good question. You see, Satan had a rebellion against God. Satan rebelled against God and he lost. He was put out of heaven. Uh What, was the devil in him? Yes. (laughs) How did he get there? Made. How'd you get down here? You were made. And yet he rebelled. How did he rebel? Same way you rebel. <laughs> Free will. Yes. Free will. Uh-huh. Brown, can you, can, are you saying that there was an angel that God made that rebelled against the God who made him? Yes. Yes. Oh, man. How did he do it? Again, how do you do it? Yes. Free will. Uh-huh. I will take over God's place. Yes. And then he was put out of heaven. Uh-huh. Well, wait a minute. Where did he go? Oh. It's a good question. Where were you? God made the world. He put us in it. God said it was very good. But somewhere in between the very good and Eve in the garden, the devil got in it. You ever thought about that? He came into it. And he ruined, not by force, But by suggestion, what God made the world to be. Uh And so by suggestion, Eve partook of the fruit of the tree she wasn't supposed to. And by influence, Adam stupidly Uh did the same thing. And you see the mess that took place then and the mess continues today. That's right. But God already had a plan in mind. God is never surprised by anything. There's nothing that catches God off guard. No, Brother Dewberry, I like to quote what he says. Has it ever occurred to you that nothing has ever occurred to God? Uh You and me, you know, things occur to us, right? I didn't know that was going to happen. Of course you didn't. (laughs) <laughs> I didn't expect that. No, of course you didn't. That's right. But God's never said that. That's right. And God will never say that. Amen. You never catch God saying, oh, I had no idea right. they would do that. Right. Oh, no. He knew from the beginning. That's right. And so what God did was before the world began, had a plan in mind. Uh-huh. I'm going to send Jesus. I'm going to send him into this world that I know will rebel against me. Mm. And so the Bible lets us know that Jesus became human. You see, Jesus was with the Father in the beginning. So was the Holy Spirit. Jesus became human. Uh How did he become human? God picked a young woman out. Told her, I'm going to let you be the one that physically brings forth the son of God into the world. Uh And Jesus is born in 
came to this world, he takes on human flesh. Yes. Well, when he puts on human flesh, he knows he's in uh, enemy territory. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When Jesus came into the world, he knew he was on Satan's territory. That's right. uh-huh. how, did this, how did If God made the world and told man to, to, to rule over it, to, to subdue it, how did the devil get to own it? We forfeited it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Come on, man. We forfeited it. Yes, sir. Yes. When mankind yielded to Satan, it's basically mankind signing, a, signing over the deed. <laughs> Come on, man. And giving it to the devil. Yes, yes. There are people today who get ripped off. Uh-huh. You better watch it when they talk about these reverse mortgages yes. Come on now. Come on. and other things like that. Uh-huh. You better be careful. Amen. You might be signing away something that you don't realize. That's right. Adam and Eve signed the deed. Uh-huh. God gave it to us. He told us to rule the world. He told us to, 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 to subdue it. Right. Have dominion over it. But what we're going to do, we're going to sign this paperwork, Satan. Mm. You say you want to use it for a few days? We'll sign the paperwork. Yeah. And the devil said, thank you, I just took over. Mm. That's why Jesus calls him the prince yes. of this world. Uh-huh. Jesus came into the world of darkness. And when he came into the world of darkness, he started taking battle against the forces of darkness. Yes. Oh, yes. Jesus fought Satan tooth and nail. Jesus came on enemy territory. And when he came here, he fought and the devil fought against him. And the devil said, he's defeating me, but I I got one weapon that he can't take. Uh And he pulled out scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees and Roman rulers. He pulled out all of these and he said, kill him. And they came against Jesus and they put him to death. And the heavens were watching and down on earth, the devil and all his minions were saying, yeah, we whipped him. Yes. And they cheered for three days. We knocked him out. We whipped him. We are in control. But somebody didn't tell him. That early Sunday morning. Jesus would come out of the grave. And say to the devil and all those cheering for him. You shot your best shot. But you cannot defeat me. Oh, I'm telling it to you, but let me let the Bible tell it to you. I'm in Hebrews chapter number two, beginning at verse 14. Follow me here. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same. Listen now, that through death, he might destroy him who had the power of death. That is the devil. Oh, you didn't hear that. I've been watching the NBA playoffs. I've been checking them out. Some of you have been checking them out too. Have you ever noticed when you're watching these NBA playoffs or any other sporting event, the home team has an advantage. Oh, home team is, yeah, we got you. We're going to took you. We got, got you. And we're going to oh, boo everybody. Right. Jesus came into the court of the devil's arena. Well. When he came onto the court, the people, boo, Jesus. We're going to whip you, Jesus. Jesus said, okay, let's see what you got. He came out on the court, had on his air heavens. (laughs) And when he came on the court, they said, tip it off. He got the ball. He came. He stepped back three points. He came back. He went. He moved. Dunked. He came back again. Boom, scoop, scoop and score. He moved around on the other side, hook shot. Before you know it, it was 40 to nothing. Uh-huh. Did Satan, wait a minute, time out. Yeah. 
got together with the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the Roman rulers, even Caesar himself. How do we stop this Jesus? We got a plan. We'll put him to death. Jesus said, bring it on. Second half came and Jesus came on dunking like Shaq, moving like all these other great movers, shooting like staff. And before you know it, game over. (laughs) Everybody who was booing. had to walk away sadly Uh because Jesus defeated their champion. The Bible lets us know that the worst that the devil could do to Jesus was take his human life. But Jesus came out of the grave having whipped the devil on his own court. John chapter 10. The devil didn't read this one. Jesus said, therefore, my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. He went on to say, no one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I've got the juice to pick it back up again. Oh, yes, this is Jesus. He came to defeat the devil and his minions and his resurrection and ascension proved that the devil's power had been broken. You and I have been roaming around fearful of death all our lives. But Jesus shows us there's no need to fear. Why? Because I've broken the devil's power and it has no more power over me. And if you follow me, it'll have no power over you. Have you ever noticed how many people in this world worry about the wrong thing? That's right. We fear the wrong thing. Yeah, yeah. We fear inflation. Uh-huh. My wife and I were in the market last night. Mm-hmm. And I started asking her, how in the world chicken gets so high? <laughs> what are you talking about? Five forty-nine a pound? What is this? <laughs> I remember my mother talking about the days where it wasn't that high. All you had to do was reach into the house. (laughs) Grab one by the neck, twirl and pop, let it run out and die. And before you know it, you got that blazing bird. High. (laughs) You been at the gas station lately? High. We start fearing, am I going to be able to keep paying for this stuff? Come on now. And then we worried about the gangbangers. Mm, tell it, tell it. Can I drive over here without catching a bullet? Mm, yeah. Come on now. Can I go over there without getting hit in the drive-by? Well. Can I go there? And we worry about cancer. Mm. We worry about all other types of physical ailments. Right. We worry, am I going to catch this? So we pop this pill. And we pop that pill. Yes, and I'm right down there with you. I'm taking my uh, uh, elderberry. I'm taking my Z cam and all. Oh, yeah, we worry. All right, all right. But we fear the wrong thing. That's right. Come on. We need to fear the Lord Himself. Amen. Don't worry about the one that can hurt your physical body. Fear the one. That can take and destroy you in eternity. Yes, sir. That's right. We need to learn to fear God. Yeah. Somewhere I read, fear God and keep his commandments. Yeah. This is the whole duty of man. Yes, sir. yes, we need not fear death. Come on. Going to die. All right. Nobody's staying here forever. That's right. If you made reservations for eternity down here, you make you picked the wrong hotel. Yeah. Nobody's staying here forever. But there's really no need to fear it right. when we follow God and fear Him. Yes. When we look at this, we got to understand the text. Y'all, y'all still here? Yes, sir. It's a teaching sermon. Look a little further in this text of scripture. Uh-huh. The Bible tells us some things here that are very important about Jesus. Brown, I thought you were talking about the church. I never knew. Uh, if this sounds strange, it's because you don't know it. Uh-huh. See, this is all a part of the church. Yes, sir. You wouldn't have a church without this text of what Jesus did. Mm. Let's look a little further. The Bible said, he descended. He that ascended. 
is the one that descended right. to the lower parts of the earth. Uh -huh. Oh, we got to understand what Jesus did. In one level, this means that he became incarnate. He left heaven to come here. And in that sense, you can understand it as the lowest part of the earth. But there's another level here that you and I need to think about. Because the Bible, look at the verse. Verse 9, that's he ascended. What does it mean that he also ascended? He, 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 he ascended, but he first descended. Yep. into the lower parts of the earth. He became man. Yeah. But there's something else to consider. Mm -hmm. He who descended is also the one who ascended, watch this now, far above all the heavens. Uh -huh. Wait, say, wait a minute. There's just one heaven. Mm. You need to read the scriptures. Come on, come on. Far above the Heavens. Yes. I remember Paul talking about a man who got caught up on the, on the third heaven. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Far above the heavens. Mm -hmm. The point I'm making is that as low as Jesus went is as high as Jesus went back to. Mm. They're extremes. Well, well, what is low as we go? I'm glad you asked that question. Low as we go. And when we die, mm -hmm. and we go to the place of disembodied spirits, uh -huh. right, right. we go to Hades. Yes, sir. Brian, you making it up? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Somewhere I read, Acts chapter 2. Yeah. Somewhere I read, as the prophetic words of David were mentioned, it was applied to Jesus. Thou shalt not leave my soul in Hades. All right, all right. No, would you let your holy one suffer uh. corruption? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happens to you when you die? What happens to me? What's happened to the folk who's already who've already gone on? Mm. Uh, Jesus taught this story one time. He talked about the rich man and Lazarus. Lazarus. He said they both died. Yeah. And in Hades they opened up their eyes my father left me in 99 he is in Hades David left here long before then he is in Hades great great grandma is in Hades where will you be in Hades until the Lord is the world. Mm -hmm. Then you coming up. Mm -hmm. Then we all coming up. Brown, this sounds strange. Well, that's because you haven't looked at your Bible. Come on, man. We come up from there. But in the meantime, mm -hmm. that's where we are. All right. That's the way of humanity. Uh -huh. Now, I get more than that in another sermon, but I'm going to let you know that's where we are. Well, what about Jesus? Remember we read from Hebrews? In all things, he had to be made just like his brethren. Where did Jesus go? Well, he died. He was crucified. They put his body in the tomb, but Jesus wasn't there. Come on now. No more than your loved one is in that cemetery plot that you bought. And put the body in. Ah, I'm going to go to the tomb. I remember. Like it was yesterday. When I lost my dear wife. Mm -hmm. I went home. After all the funeral and all stuff. I drove back home. And I was flying down the highway. Uh -huh. To get to the cemetery. It had been about a month. Maybe two. My daughter called me. i never forget it. She said, don't spend too much time there because she's not there. All right. All right. That's right. Yes, sir. Boy, that hit me. <laughs> I eased up off the accelerator mm. because the person is not there. That's right. When also my dad I came home after the funeral, all that, went back up to see mom, make sure she's okay. But before I got there, I had this dream. Mm. I dreamt, this is a dream now, I dreamt I got there, and 
And dad was sitting at a table talking. And in my dream, I was thinking, no, no, you, you're not here. You can't be here. Mm. That's what my mind was. Right. The bottom line is, when we leave here, we don't come back. Amen. Here. Yeah. Mm. When Jesus was crucified, where did he go? He, well, he wasn't laying up in the tomb. <laughs> all right. He went the way of all humanity. Yes, sir. He did in world. That's it. That's it. The difference is he came back mm. never to die Amen. again. Amen. Are you hearing me this morning? Yeah, that's good. What about David? He went down there. Still there. Mm. <laughs> what about Abraham? He went down there. He's still there. Mm. Go ahead and read what Jesus taught about that. Jesus. Remember Lazarus was in Abraham's yes, sir. bosom? Yes, sir. Abraham, was he, was he on the earth? No. In Hades. Where were you and where will I be? We will be in the place of disembodied spirits. Uh -huh. But Jesus went there not to stay. He came back. Yes. Well, let me hasten on. I'm making, I'm making you, some of you frow, uh, uh, bend your eyebrow the wrong way. Let me, let me, let me move on. I want to let you know something about Jesus. He went to the lower parts of the earth, but he did not stay there. He took on the whole human experience, birth, life, death, but then he took on a part that we hadn't gotten to yet. Resurrection. Can you see it? Yes, sir. That's why he's the firstborn uh, of the dead. Yes, sir. What do you mean? Lazarus came back to you? Uh, yeah, but he died again. Mm. Jairus' daughter came back to life. Yeah, but she died again. Come on now. Well, somebody else came out. Yeah, but they died again. Yes. Even old Samuel from the witch of Endor, he came up, but he didn't stay. Uh -huh. that's it. Oh. Mm. <laughs> that's why Jesus is the author and the finisher yes. of our faith. Yes. Now, I want to give you a little bit more. I'll be, I'll be, done, I'll be done directly. Mm -hmm. I want to show you that Jesus told us we don't need to fear death. Uh -huh. well, look at it. I'm in 1 Timothy. I'm sorry, 2 Timothy right now. I'm in chapter 1. I'm going to, for time, I'm going to abbreviate this. But this is in 2 Timothy 1, verses 8 through 10. I'm going to abbreviate it. Watch this. Uh, I can't agree. It's, it's too good. I got to read it all. Uh, uh. Therefore, listen to Paul. Do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. Watch this now. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, all right, all right. not according to our works. But according to his own purpose and grace, yes, sir. which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Now pay close attention. Mm -hmm. But now has been received at, by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Watch it now. Who has abolished death mm -hmm. and brought life and immortality to light. Come on now. By the gospel. Yes, sir. As not a person you know who's died who can come back and tell you what it's like. <laughs> not one. Oh, you might have a dream when oh, so and so he came talk to me in my dream. That's all it was. Mm. It's not a person. I remember, I remember, I remember, I remember reading this story years ago that preachers were telling this story to try to get people to come to Christ. And they, they said, oh, the story uh, 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 about a dead person that escaped uh, death and came back in a dream and told somebody he had to get right. And then the person went back and people, oh, I need to hear, I need to hear grandma, granda. I, I need to hear my dog come and tell me. <laughs> no, no such thing. Come on now. In fact, Jesus told us this himself. When, when that man was suffering, he said, Jesus, hey, Father Abraham, can you send Lazarus over here to dip his finger in and cool my tongue, torture it. And Abraham said, no, that's not going to happen. Well, he said, well, send one of my, uh, can, can somebody from the, one, one, go back and tell my brothers? Yes, 
Yeah. Somebody dead, go back and tell my brothers so they can avoid coming here. Mm-hmm. And the answer is, ain't nobody leaving here. Uh, come on now. They have the word. Yeah. They won't obey the word, then they won't, they won't believe anybody coming back from the dead. Well, well. But Jesus gives us a new insight. Yes, sir. The Bible tells us that Jesus has abolished death. Oh, he might live to be 105. Yeah. 110 may not even make 65. Mm. But don't worry about it. Because Jesus has destroyed death. Uh Well, if he's destroyed death, why do I have to die? You can't get to the other side without dying. What's the other side? Well, Jesus has brought it to light. He is never dying again. Uh Nor will you. Come on now. Once you pass through what he had to pass through. Well, now, time is way gone. I got to hurry. Got to hurry. Got to hurry. A little bit more about this. Look at this. Look at this. Jesus' victory over Satan includes freeing us from the power that owned us. Look at the text. I'm still in Ephesians 4. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in verse 8, he led captivity captive. Uh Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what's this all about? Jesus' victory over the devil showed all the heavenly hosts Mm -hmm. who's in charge. All right, now. See, the only folks that don't know the devil is defeated are us uh, us down here. (laughs) Come on, come on. All the heavenly beings, they know the devil's been defeated. Yeah, that's right. They know. That's good. They've already been cheering. They got their banners for Jesus hanging up already. <laughs> the only folk who haven't realized it are the folk down here. Yes. We're still down here. Uh-huh. Why? Because we're still in, this, in a deceived world. Yes. yes. We're down here. Oh, the devil is powerful, but he's been whipped. Yes. Oh, what's that? That exorcist movie the other day. I'm afraid of him. But he's been whipped. Jesus. Oh, I'm afraid that if I get sick, he might mess with my. But he's been whipped. Yes. Well, how come all the signs say that he's still around? Who you think put up the signs? <laughs> but if we take a heavenly perspective, we see a victorious Jesus and a defeated devil. And can I tell you that the time finally will come where all human beings everywhere will finally realize the devil's been defeated. When Jesus comes back again and he rolls back the curtain, Uh we'll see who the real victor is. And everybody will have to bow to him and confess him as the son of God. And the devil and all who followed his deception will be thrown into an everlasting lake of fire. But see, you and I, we're down here. We're still looking at the false signs. Come on. We like those folk on January 6th. Uh. Reading those false, I won. I won the election. Uh, I'm the one who won. I won it. We won it bigly. Uh. <laughs> you got a bunch of folk leaving that mess uh-huh. going down. We're going to storm the Capitol because our man won. And somebody in jail, in jail now. That's right. That's right. Believe foolishness. Yes, sir. A lot of us think the devil is one, and we believe in that. Mm-hmm. I might as well live for the devil because Jesus is dead. No. Come on. He has led captivity captive when he led the, uh, Satan in his chains. Mm-hmm. All the heavenly hosts said, King of kings yeah. Yeah, yeah. and Lord of lords. Amen. But see, down here, we're still on the old channel. Mm-hmm. Oh. We haven't gotten direct TV yet. You know. Oh. <laughs> We down here. Y'all remember the days of ABC, NBC, and CBS? Yeah. Some, yes. some of y'all remember? You know, you had the old antenna, remember? Yes. Or the, or the, or the coat hanger. The, y'all remember that, right? We still watching that TV. Uh-huh. But there's a greater picture. Yes, sir. Where Jesus shows I've already won. Now, 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 what is this let captivity captive? Notice, what is, what is this getting at? Uh, not only what I've explained, but you and I have to remember in a different sense, we are still being told we are captive. Uh-huh. Mm. Why you got Christians going around telling me I can't help myself? Mm. Sound like the old four tops. Uh-huh. Sugar pie, honey bun. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know that I love you, sin. Uh. I can't help myself. I love you and nobody else. Right. You need to throw that away. <laughs> we think we can't help ourselves. Uh -huh. well. and we excuse a lot of things we know we ought not be excusing. Yeah. I can't help myself. The music got too good. I had to drop the foot of the loom. Uh. Peace, Doc. Peace. <laughs> Go ahead. I couldn't help myself. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Hey, you can help yourself. Tell it. You know good and well, you and I can help ourselves. Please, please. Because we're not really helping ourselves as children of God. We're being empowered by the Holy Spirit to say no. Amen. All right, all right. And so we don't need to stay captive. That's right. We are freed. Romans chapter number six, verses 16 through 18. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you obey from the heart that form of doctrine which delivered unto you, being then made free from sin. Yes. Right. You became servants of righteousness. Oh, yeah. And so then here's where I have to come to a conclusion for part one. So then what is, what does all this have to do with the church? Well, what it has to do with the church is two things. First of all, it gives us a spiritual kaleidoscope right. of what the church really is. Uh -huh. It is the body of people who've been delivered from the realm of satanic rule. Amen. It is the body of people called out from the operations of this world. Yes, sir. It is the body of people that has been and is being saved. It is the body of people sanctified and being sanctified. It is the body of people that have been sealed by the Holy Spirit. It is the body of people that constitute the pillar and ground of truth. It is the body of people that Jesus is coming back for. It is the bride of Christ. It's the body of people blood bought and heaven bound. Amen. And all of that took place because Jesus descended Amen. and ascended. Amen. Often we forget when we talk about the church we focus on us mm. when the focus has to be yes. on him. Yes. That's right. That's right. Can I tell you that the church is nothing without Jesus? That's right. Amen. Amen. It really is nothing without Jesus. That's right. And we say, well, it's the bride of Christ. And you know, the husband needs his wife. You got to stop pressing that too far in Ephesians 5. All right. All right. You wouldn't even have the church That's right. without he who descended yes. and then ascended right, because without his descent and ascent we would still be down here messed up Amen. lost in our sins yes, sir. and lastly the church who never knew must understand the fact that we are world changing organism but how do we do it I'm going to end with this one look at it in the text mm -hmm. oh my goodness it's right here and it's been here all the whole time <laughs> all these things we said about Jesus and at the end of verse number nine and that he might fill all things. Watch this. And he himself. And it goes on the list, the gifts that he gave. Mm -hmm. The gifts that are talked about in Ephesians four are all a result of what he who descended and ascended and he gave gifts to us. Why? So that we can show his rule. Amen. In this God forsaken world. Yes, Amen. That's the church Amen. that you never knew. Right. Well, Brother Mahon, is the one that sings the right way? You see, we get all caught up in doing church. Uh, come on. And we miss what the church really is. Yeah. Yeah. We get caught up in the functions that we have come up with in our own traditions, but we forgot he who descended and who has ascended. Mm -hmm. And who's coming back for us. Yes. Yes. That's the message for today. Good. The church you never knew. I hope you get to know it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I hope we get to know it. Yes. Because we are a part of it. Amen. I dare not close without giving you an opportunity to obey the gospel. If you never surrendered to Jesus and all that I've talked about, he's done. Mm -hmm. It can't be a better day than today to do it. 
All you need to do is believe who he is and what he says. Be willing to turn from your way and be buried with him in baptism. That you might have the remission of sins and the gift of the Holy Spirit and thereby also be added to this spiritual body that he has put together. Are you here? Are you willing to come? Are you here and you just need prayer? It's your opportunity to respond if you'd like to. Let's stand together. Let's...